joining me now on the phone here uh, at the stadium uh, on the Rich Eisen Show is Lawyer Malloy. How are you, Lawyer? I'm doing excellent. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. What are your recollections of Ty Long going to be when you when you come here tonight? Well, what a what a honor, man. Um, you know, once you start getting that HOF after your name, is uh, it, for one, it it, it really uh, gives you the credit for a great career. Um, and, and secondly, it just you know really could, it, it solidifies that you're getting old, man. We're all getting old uh, when everybody <laughs> is uh, uh, has done what we done as a, as a team and him as an individual. You know, uh, awards like this happen, and I can't wait for today. He was the rock of our of our defense because he had the, the, really the toughest job to go out there to stop the the, the, the best re receivers in the game. I think he was the best corner of our era, and he really let us really play ten on ten football, get exotic with our defenses because we knew the number one uh, receiver on their team was going to be taken out of the game. Lawyer Malloy joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. And Lawyer, I mean, your name has been bandied about quite a bit lately. I don't know if you've heard in relation to Jim Harbaugh having lost the locker room in San Francisco. And many people say uh, whenever you hear about a coach potentially losing the team based on the way the players are thinking, your name comes up based on your 2003 Week 1 release in New England and how the, the team had supposedly been lost because of you. What do you think of when you hear uh, about your week one 2003 incident now that we're sitting here in 2014? Well, that week really defined uh, me as, a, as an individual, as a, as a player. Um, I, I, I will never forget that. I am always uh, constantly reminded uh, when, when, when a, a number, uh, really a top player around the league gets, gets uh, released by a team. Uh, my name always comes up. Uh, for me, um, you know, it was a very surreal time in my life, and it was just uh, really an eye-opener to the reality that the league is a business. And uh, here I was, a, a guy that was you know, had played, you know, seven years uh, in a city that really wasn't recognized before, uh, before I had gotten there, ultimately to uh, win a championship, bring a championship to a city, and just see the whole – the atmosphere around the city, you know, change. Uh, my loyalties were uh, were very, very strong. And uh, when 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 I got asked to, uh, you know, really take a pay cut, and you know, I I really just felt like <clears throat> for everything I had done at the time, uh, I could not accept that. And uh, I definitely understood. It was just time to move on. Uh, obviously, the, the Patriots did a, a very good job of uh, of doing that that year. They won the champion uh, the championship after you know, uh, obviously we beat them 31 nothing. The first week, but they rebounded. Um, that's what they do. Uh, uh, you know, as long as Belichick and and and, and Tom Brady is uh, part of the, the Patriots organization, they're always going to rebound. They're always going to have a chance to win. Well, now obviously you uh, have a rapprochement with the uh, with the Patriots organization and the Kraft family, as they uh, they their their doors uh, all, always open uh, to Patriots coming back. What what has that been like for you, lawyer? Well, my relationship with Mr. Kraft is, uh, is 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 second to none. You know, uh, he's a man. That's what, and that's one of the things that hurt so so bad that week is just not only did I have a, a you know I, I was a community figure, not only did I, I play well on the field, but uh, you know I really um, looked up to the Kraft family, especially Mr. Kraft and Mara, his his, his uh, wife who has passed uh, passed away. Um, you know, they were they were you know prime you know good examples every day of what I wanted to be, you know, off the field. And um, uh, all of a sudden to have that, that relationship kind of, you know, uh, uh, turned upside down and, and taken away from me, you know, it really, it really hurt me. And it took a while for me to, you know, kind of ease my way back here. Uh, but the one thing about it is because of what we did here, what I did individually here, uh, I'm always going to be a patriot. I can't run from it and stuff like that. And uh, just over the last, really, the last two or three years, just, you know, slowly but surely coming back, Get my name, you know, uh, you know, through either you know Twitter, social media, Instagram. Uh, yes. I have uh, you know, really two teams that I root for, and that's the Patriots and the Seahawks. And the Seahawks as well. Interesting, and you almost had that as a as a uh, you know a Super Bowl last year. Interestingly enough. So what what do you think of when you recall Brady coming off of that sideline in that game against the Jets? What, which, by the way, was the last time the Patriots started a season 0 and 2. That was right. the last time that happened. What, what was it like when uh, 12 trotted on the field for the first time and then started becoming the 12 that we 
have uh, come to know here in New England, lawyer? Well, I think it was a su surprise not only to the fans that he was coming in, you know, uh, uh, after Drew got hurt because they went out and got Damon Hewitt um, from Miami uh, through free agency that 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 uh, that off season, and everybody I think just kind of, including myself, kind of assumed that he was going to be got the guy up next. And I remember when uh, Tommy grabbed his uh, his helmet, I looked at uh, at Damon. Obviously, Damon uh, was my quarterback at the University of Washington, so I have a good relationship with him. And he looked back at me, and I looked at him, and he shrugged his, sh uh, shrugged his shoulders. And uh, you know, obviously, the, the, the organization and the coaching staff saw something in the, in the guy, you know, uh, do, during the, the off season, during training camp, that uh, they just had to give him that opportunity. And Tommy went in there, you know, uh, buckled up his, his, his chin strap, and you know, played played well. We lost that game, but the, the next week's preparation, uh, he was just, uh, you know, he, he wanted to, to, to gain our respect, to say, guys, this is going to be okay. I got you. Um, I know you don't know me yet, but just you know, just follow my lead or whatever. And he just fit, fit right in. Uh, you know, the next game, I don't, I, I really can't recall the next game, but just his his overall preparation, his uh, competitive nature. Uh, you know, we just knew that the guy was going to be okay, and we really thought, you know, I I I, I can speak from you know, myself is that okay, you know, this guy is a fierce competitor. We're going to be okay until until Drew comes back. Well, he had a different mindset. You know, uh, Tommy had a different mindset. His mindset was, hey, if they give me a chance, I'm gonna. Give them every reason not to uh, to get the other guy back in the game, and that's uh, you know that's what happened. Uh, he played well enough. Uh, yeah. He showed them enough uh, in in the locker room, in the classroom, and on the field to where you know uh, they obviously made the decision to to, to roll with them, and uh, the rest is history. And uh, speaking of history, and it's interesting again, you mentioned the other team that you you refer yourself as associated with being the Seahawks you spent two years with them they've now won a Super Bowl with yeah. Pete Carroll as head coach right. who was around these parts here in New England uh, and I just it's I'd love to just ask you before I let you go before you come here tonight for the big night with uh, Ty Law and the, and the Patriots uh, about what Pete Carroll has essentially become in the National Football League lawyer yeah. Yeah, before I talk about Pete, I'll, I'll just say the reason why sure. I root for the Seahawks is because I'm from Tacoma, Washington. I'm a, a product of, of okay. uh, the state of Washington, and and for me individually, I could not have uh, uh, asked for more to but to have my well to empty my em, empty my tank personally. Uh, my career in in Seattle, playing my last two years there under Pete Carroll, my last year just really gave me a chance to, you know, to mentor and tutor, you know, two of the best safeties in the in the game right now, Earl Thomas and, and Cam Chancellor. Now I had Pete, you know, obviously back here and. In, in New England, uh, he's actually the guy that really, you know, uh, really kind of put me on the map because when he when he sat me down, um, obviously we had uh, uh, Coach Parcells, my rookie year uh, draft me. We had just lost the the Super Bowl, and this guy, you know, sits, sits me down. And he says, "Hey, you're going to be the Tim McDonald of uh, the Patriots defense." And I was like, uh, "What?" You know, uh, because I really looked up to Tim and you know some <laughs> of the other you know safeties like Ronnie Lott and uh, some of the other guys. And when he said Tim McDonald, and you're going to be that guy, I just I, you know I, as a young guy, I didn't I didn't believe leave him and sure enough he uh you know he he made me a, a very important part of, of of his defense and we went to the playoffs two two out of three years but I really didn't think that he had you know, really control or say in the uh you know uh, uh selection of, of players either through the draft or or through uh free agency free agency and ultimately you know we, we went out and got Belichick now when he went down to USC I think he figured figured something out um, he came back into the league, obviously on his own own terms. I think him and uh, him and Snyder, the GM up in uh, uh, in Seattle, uh, you know, obviously I think they're got a genuine uh, uh, relationship. They're on the same accord, you know, uh, with, with selecting these players. Uh, they're, they're fighting every every uh, week to, um, to 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 get the roster right. And it's the same the same process I saw happen here in New England happen there, and ulti ultimately they became champions. Uh, lawyer, listen, I appreciate you giving me some time. At Lawyer Malloy on Twitter, right? Yeah. yeah. Get to throw that out there. You, take, you follow Lawyer Malloy on Twitter, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you here later on tonight at Gillette. Thanks for uh, giving thanks, me Rich. a few moments here. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience.